Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our first ever Ask and Learn. I am very excited to kick this off. I think Ed and Christy are as well. Um, so this is going to be round robin style. We're going to go through the list of attendees and any questions that you might have about Flex or any of our other tools, it's your chance to get them out. Uh, without further ado, I am handing this over to Ed and Christy. I will be here, but I'm turning off my mic and my camera because this is really the MLS data and compliance show, not mine. So Ed and Christy, you're on stage, take it away and thank you for everything you're about to share. Thank you. Amanda, can you let me share screen real quick? I suppose I can do that. This session probably wouldn't be very successful without that. Sorry about that. <laughs> We're going to start going over a couple um, common issues we have, some things that we'd like you to understand and get a little better um, understanding about it. And then you can ask questions if you have something regarding that or anything else. So on that note, let's go to Flex. All right, so everyone knows there's different dashboards here, MLS, Agent, and Home. Um, I'm always an MLS because I use it differently. Um, a couple things we want to show you is with the new changes, there's a lot of fields you can add to your searches. So if you go to Quick Search, and we got a question regarding how do you look at listings from the last month? So listing date is not a default setting here of options. So you go to this great little plus sign here and you type in list. Here's listing date. You change the dates. Let's do January. And Oh, that's 2020. Maybe I should do 2021. I'm not ready for 2021 yet, apparently. Whoops. So anything in that add a field One more time here if I get the right dates. 2021. So there are your results. There were 212 listed in that time frame. So if there's anything else, let's say, let me get rid of that. Anything else in there that you would like to know? Let's say garage, um, which is under parking features now. So you have all these options to add in so that you can make it a more detailed search and kind of narrow down what your results are. Um, that is way more options than what, you know, is available here. We have tons of them. If you don't want to look through the list, you can specify just exactly what that is. Okay, next thing before we take some questions here to get you thinking is we had some changes to the basement. Um, with the RESO changes, the basement area has changed into unfinished and finished square footage. So just going to the hot sheet, I'll pull up a listing here. So on this one here, you can see the unfinished basement is 1,000 square feet, and the below grade finished area is 747, which makes that total for the basement the 1753. So that is different than what it used to have in Flex, where it had total square footage for the basement. Okay. I will stop sharing and it looks like we have a question here. Um, 
Someone raise their hand. Anne, do you have a question? And I've given you the ability to talk, so. Um... Thank you. It's easier than trying to type it out. <laughs> Christy, you just raised a question then, because I saw Jesse Schmidt, an appraiser, put this on the GLAR site yesterday about that basement area. So in the past, for the unfinished area, we were supposed to take it off a certain area on BSNA and use that for the foundation size, which is the entire basement size, and then just put just the finished area in the finished category. So she's wondering now, are we supposed to be then be splitting that out so that the unfinished part is truly just the unfinished part or the entire basement where like two weeks ago, I think Ed was on that one too, we're supposed to use the, the figure off the BSNA so that it matches for appraisers. So there's one of my questions. What do we do? So um, we, as of now, we're going to separate it into that unfinished and finished basement area so that we have an accurate information for that. We realize there's a little bit of an issue with mapping with Flex, and Flex is working on getting a solution to that. Um, but this gives it a more detailed, um, a detailed, we know how much of that basement is finished. So that's why we wanted to bring it up so everyone is aware there are two different sections there. So the total basement would be the combination of what's unfinished and what's finished. Because what the appraiser said, she said on hers of now it looks like the basement is bigger than the house. When you look at that top category, because we've been trained to do it the other way, total unfinished, I mean, total basement at the bottom line, just the finished above. And then anyway, then I have another question. Yeah. If it's appropriate to ask now. Um, and this has to do with my many years of being a closing broker. Title companies would always take like, the list of the appliances or a shed or central air, all that stuff off the line side sheet to put on the, close, the GLAR closing agreement as under the bill of sale items. Those things aren't showing up now if they're older listing and that type of thing or not all those fields come out. So I just sent a word to my office. We got to really make sure we watch that somebody doesn't have end up buying the refrigerator when it was at the house or something isn't on the line side now through all this course of changing to make sure it's handled by the closing and someone doesn't end up buying a refrigerator at the closing because it's, oh, it's not on there. I guess we can take it with us. So you may have to just educate agents, I guess. Yeah, so we still have appliances there um, on the listing. So, so I like guess central air doesn't show up under appliances. Nope, that's a separate section. So right. I think it says central air. So I just think as a whole group, we're going to have to not put it on the back of the title companies to make sure they have it correct. We have, as agents, have to make sure that those items are on there that we know are there rather than having them rely on the line side because of all the changes. Yeah, it's just everything is still there. It's just in different places. So um, like cooling is all because it might not be central air, it may be a window unit that may not be available. Um, so that's why this way it's, um, the RESO standard is so that you can go from MLS to MLS and there's a standardization of the data. So even older listings, when we print those out, the older ones from like a month ago before resell or two months ago should still fill over correctly. And then the brand new ones, everything will show up then. Yep. So. The only information that can go over is the fields that they filled out. So okay. if someone didn't enter in that it had central air, there'd be nothing in that field. Does so, that when I, so when I go to print off a listing sheet, I don't have to set up my template to make sure it prints out all those categories. It's just automatically gonna do it. Yep. Wonderful, thank you. Okay. All right, and let's see here. It's going to be an updated input sheet with all of these changes. I will go ahead and show you where that is. In the past, that was done. Um, there was an input form in Transaction Desk with the listing contract. That is not part of the listing contract that was added as a convenience because um, people wanted that available. Let me see here. So it will be available in transaction desk, but not as part of the listing contract. It will be a separate form. So if you are trying to input a listing and you need those input forms, you go into menu, daily function, input forms, 
And then you just click on the property type that you would like. And there it's loaded with all of your available options and it has what's required and what is not. And one thing I will interject here, um, because somebody asked in chat as well, with the time frame for these input sheets to be into um, transaction desk is. <clears throat> and currently we have some feel, as you saw the way that, the, that Christy brought that listing input sheet up is that's a report that's generated from Flex. That report gives you all of the available options that are there for, for each property type in the listing input. Now, because of the data moves and because of RETS notifications for our third party vendors that do IDX sites and things like this, we cannot remove a lot of those places that no longer have options anymore that have been moved into a new place. Like for instance, the, the heating and cooling, which is now under appliance uh, or appliances features. So if we send those input sheets now, they're gonna have incorrect data. We're gonna have to ask them to do it again and then do it again every time this, this form changes. Uh, it creates a lot of work, uh, creates a backlog for, for transaction desks. So we can't really do that effectively. So what we're doing is we're waiting until RETS notification has gone out. Those old fields are completely removed and no longer available within Flex. Then we're going to generate that form and we're going to send that to them. Um, I don't have a definitive time frame, um, but I know that we are working towards that goal and, and we're going to let everybody know when those forms are being sent and when they'll be available from transaction desk. And it looks like Jamie has a question. Amanda, if you wanna enable her to speak. Hey, Jamie, you should be able to speak in your mic now. Oh, she doesn't have a mic. She doesn't have a mic, so that's not good. <laughs> All right, I will read her question. Is there a way to edit those pages digitally and not print them out and put the information in by hand? Um, well, there is, and there isn't. Um, I mean, there, there's a, you, you can use Adobe Acrobat, which is a, a, a pay for application that will allow you to edit PDFs. Um, but through Flex natively, there, there's not a way. Um, so there's a way, it's just not an easy way um, to do that. And then another question from Facebook, under parking, what would you use garage for? I know we now put number under spaces. So that would be if it has a garage for parking, um, instead of garage being a separate field, that's now under parking features. Hopefully that answered your question. All right, while we're waiting for more questions to come up, I'll show you another tool um, that I don't think gets utilized quite often. Go to Flex here. So in Flex, you have this guided help and it will show you step-by-step -step how to go through what it is you're looking for. So for instance, if I'm looking for subscriptions, it verbally, you know, it tells me what I can do. And then there's a guided tour here and I can set it up and just give it a second here. And it will hold your hand step-by-step step on how to do this. So it tells you the step-by-step. Step. You wanna to go to quick search, select the template. 
select your criteria, et cetera. So anyway, it's a good tool to use. There's tons of things that you can search in there. If you have any questions, if you're not sure how to do something, the guided help will hold your hand. And on that note today, um, Amanda put in the Facebook group, the new Flex tutorial as to how to save a template. So if you're searching something, let's say, I want, I only want to search for listings that have over three bedrooms or over three bathrooms. Um, I would save this as one of my templates if that's something I'm always going to search for. And you can save that under someone's name. If you're always looking for sold instead of active, you can do that. But there's different ways to have templates so you're not going in and putting the same criteria in every time. Um, Please repeat where we can get updated input sheets with changes. All right, let me show you that again. So from your Flex dashboard, you just go to menu under daily functions here is input forms. And here you have all the different property types. So you click on them and then print. And that is always going to be your most updated forms because that's coming directly from Flex. Any other questions right now? Ed, is there anything you want to discuss here? Um, um, no, I. Not that's jumping right out at me. All right, any other questions in chat here? There are some new changes as to what um, requirements there are. Let's see. Um, we went over living area source. We've gone over that a couple times. Um, appliances here. Also that the water heater um, is located in appliances. That is one that is often skipped over. That used to be a separate field. Now it's into appliances. So don't forget that one. I would like to say that that it's I find it really encouraging and I really enjoy the fact that that our membership is as engaged as they are. Um, and they're, they're bringing up these items to us, uh, even if they're they're through email, like if they find an issue with with the data, please report it because if, if we don't know that it's that it's broken, we really can't fix it. Um, you know, the, the, the basement issue is a fantastic uh, example of this. We didn't really know that this was mapped incorrectly or that um, and what we've, we've found is that it's not necessarily mapped incorrectly, but more education is needed on how to put this in because like, like, I forget your name, I'm sorry, uh, in the beginning it said you were trained on how to do it one way. Now there's a, a new way to do it. Um, and, you know, that's a member education. Those are things that we can now address. Um, with, you know, with the Ask and Learns and with MLS Minute, uh, I'm sure there's going to be other items that that we need to to um, help our, our membership understand the different ways to do this. Um, another another fantastic issue is is every um, every Ask and Learn, well, the two <laughs> that we've had so far. You know, we go out um, about showing people how to add things to searches because there's there's quite a few people that have had issues where we've had added fields and they don't know how to put them into the templates or they don't know how to add them to their searches. Um, this is exactly why we wanna get this information out here, why we wanna present ourselves um, to you in this fashion so you can get uh, the, the most out of this system as you possibly can. Ed or Christy, 
uh, whichever one of you, I don't know if you want to rock, paper, scissors it out or whatever, but can one of you show how to do a custom map overlay? Sure, I can do that. So let me, All right, so you should be looking at my Google Chrome here. Um, if we go to the quick search, and I'm just gonna leave it here for all the active and coming soon. And I'm gonna zoom in on an area. Cause let's say I wanna live, or I'm looking for homes in, in this area right here. So on the bottom map, um, you can see there's there's a protractor, there's a measure tool. Um, so you can go out like I want to live within five miles of Old Everett neighborhood or of a, of a specific thing. Um, like say, you know, I want to live within five miles from Whole Foods. Um, you can locate Whole Foods on the map and use the measurement tool. Um, or you can use like a, the circle tool. So from here, you select the circle tool you click on the map and then you move your mouse. And now you can do, let's say, let's just say a mile and a half radius from where you wanted, where you wanted to be. Um, you click on that again to, to stop the circle. And now you're down to 23 listings within that geographical area. Um, you can also, oops, sorry about that. Um, you can remove the circle and you can even use a trapezoid. Um, let's say, sorry, my mouse is being a little silly. Um, let's say we want to live in this area and you can, you can get pretty detailed with that and then The technical person is having te technical difficulties, apparently. And my mouse is stuck. <laughs> All right, I'm going to stop my share now because that's awful. So we got another question of what category are sheds under now? and sheds are under other structures. Hopefully that helps. And it will, I mean, oh, just found it, great. <laughs> and it will take a little time just getting to know the new input forms, getting to understand where they are. Um, but there's way more options than there were before and hopefully we can have much more detailed listings. Like I said, there's a couple of the changes like basement doing the finished and unfinished and adding them together is what you get for the total basement. And let's see, uh, do you wanna show the map overlays that has the flood zones and schools? I'm still having difficulty with my mouse, Christy. Can you take that, please? Yeah. Let's see here. All right. Just a second here. All right, I've got it. Okay. I've got it figured out. <clears throat> we'll, we'll try it again. Let's see if we can make it work this time. All right, so again, you should be in my 
in my flex now. Now for the overlays, uh, I, I showed you the map tools and there's a little button down here, um, kind of gives you an idea on what these tools are and, and how to use them, okay? Um, on the upper right-hand corner here of your map, you should also have a satellite view. Um, and then here in the overlays, this will give you elementary schools, flood zones, high school, um, high schools, uh, middle schools, and zip codes. So let's just go flood zones. If you select flood zone, now it will overlay the flood zone map for you. Um, and you can zoom in. You can see where the homes sit on the flood zones. You can uncheck that. And then you can say, let's go with elementary schools. And then it has an overlay of where these school zones are. And then you can see the results from your search within these areas. So if you want to take, um, and let's just go a two to three, two to three bedroom um, within Bennett Woods area, We'll go ahead and <clears throat> you can see the, the houses that are in there. Now let's just go ahead and we'll draw a circle. And then you get your seven results. And that's just a quick way and how to use overlays. Anyone else, any other questions before we wrap up here? It does not appear that any more questions are coming in. Oh, wait, one more came in. Um, Laura, would you like to be unmuted to explain your question a little bit more? Okay, I'm going to unmute you. So you should be able to speak now. Okay, thank you very much. This has been really helpful. Um, just a quick question. So I, I have a couple of people actually looking for places that um, uh, within an hour and a half radius so that helpful with the radius thing that you did there but uh, within an hour and a half driving because everyone's you know working remotely and these lake homes are going so quickly and but how do we find lake homes like if they specifically say it's got to have a sandy beach it can't be weedy or anything without looking at pictures is there a way to I haven't found a way to um, query that way like for like front, like going, I don't want anything. I want a place where we can, you know, without the weeds. So that's the problem I'm coming across is um, trying to find something that has like a swimmable area and a uh, maybe even place for a boat dock, like a boat area where it wouldn't get all weeded up. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, I'm not positive. I may have to do some research on that. We can search lakefront, but as far as the um, like beaches, yeah, like the, yeah, and and rather than looking at because there's so in an hour and a half radius, there's quite a few lakes, and you literally have to hope they, um, <laughs> you really have to hope that the pictures are right. So because there's really not a way to see that part. And that's really like an important piece to the least two people that I have that want to do something. Yep. And it, and to that point, it depends on the data share partners and whether they require that or not. I um, see. So we're kind of limited to that. I would say another resource you can check um, RPR. Okay. If, if that helps you anymore. Okay. You can do lakefront, you can do waterfront. 
I'm going to share my screen again really quickly because um, okay. this may help. Okay, thank you. If you, and thank you, Anne, for, for mentioning this. Um, but if you, if you go to your search here and add water and type in waterfront, this will bring up waterfront features. Okay. And within the waterfront features, there's beach access and beach front. Um, it doesn't specifically address your sandy beach um, issue, but it may yeah. help you narrow down some of the results. Now, again, okay. um, especially an hour and a half from, from water, which, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a huge area. So that's not just going to be, you know, RMLS. So again, the data share partners and what they require or how they fill out the information is, is really going to be determinant on what you can find. And, and does navigable water mean that, that it's boatable? One of the- That was an excellent question. Um, let me, let me look at something really quickly. Christy, you wanna? Yeah, I've never um, been posed. I'm looking, up, I'm looking that up in, right now. <laughs> I know, I'm being challenged by my two, two uh, people that are uh, having me look and I am just like, oh, the, I am just not putting the right um, criteria in, I don't think. And so, oops, I have a web phone that's going on. But um, yeah, so it's just been kind of a challenge. So the, the, di the dictionary definition, the RISO dictionary definition for navigable water is the water wide, slow, and deep enough for water vessels. So yeah, it would be boatable. Be boatable. Okay, boatable. Gotcha. Thank you for doing that. Okay, I, I, I'll play with it a little bit more. Um, I just wish... Yeah, I wish there was something like, is it swimmable or can there be a dock or you know, like more more definitive. <laughs> so anyway, all right. Well, we'll just keep keep plugging away at it. Thank thank you. No problem. Well, one one thing too to 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 think about is dock is in water amenities. So that might help you as well. We have uh, some Come clarification on. as to the garage question earlier. Um, so yes, in parking, the garage would uh, show that there is a garage. The question has been clarified as why would you need to do that if you've already entered a number of garage spaces, if that helps at all. Again, this is coming from uh, Facebook Live. So would they need to enter garage under parking in order for spaces to appear? Nope, so that's just an option. Um, so there can be, a garage, but it may not be big enough for a parking space. Um, so that's why there's that differentiation between how many spaces are there in the garage versus garage. Because a garage doesn't necessarily mean you can definitely park a car there. And there's also there's also the, the consideration too that even if it has two or three parking spaces in the garage, did the agent put that there's three spaces for the garage, right? So, so by adding garage, that'll help pick up those, those pieces that, that may have been missed. Yep, and pole barn is under other features, I believe. And so that may be, you know, more for storage than for parking. So that's why there are so many more options and parking features. So it can be a more specific situation. Yeah, pole barn is under other structures. So even things like garage facing front, garage faces rear, um, these are just details about it.
hopefully that answered their question. Looks like that. Um, how often are input forms changing? So we should reprint each time for a new listing. At the moment, yes. Um, they will be, once we um, identify, like just today, we were made aware of the basement issue. Once we identify all the issues, then that's when those will go into transaction desk and we can say there's no changes right now um, regarding this. But for right now, it's best just to print that input form. I think that's it for here, Amanda, if there's any more on Facebook. I do not have any other questions coming through on Facebook. So I want to thank everybody for joining us for our first ever Ask and Learn. We appreciate all the questions. Um, we are hoping that this helped you today. Thank you big time to Ed and Christy for giving us their time to answer these queries. We have another one coming up right now, Tuesday noon, February 23rd. So look for that registration out there so you can register. And of course, we're always welcome to take questions in advance or give us a call anytime that we are open and we are happy to assist you in whatever way we can over the phone or in the office. So again, thank you everybody and save the date for the next one, February 23rd, which is a Tuesday at noon. And this is being recorded. Look out for it on Facebook and in our newsletters. And with that, everyone have a great rest of your day and stay safe out there and, and warm. It's chilly out. Thank you, everyone.